Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to create a 3D chamfer toolpath in MakeCaracam around a three-dimensional model like the one that you see here. Now what a chamfer toolpath allows you to do is to create a chamfered edge using a chamfer milling bit around the perimeter of your part, whether this be a surface perimeter where you're chamfering the top face or or perhaps an inner perimeter if you're chamfering around a pocket that's cut or even countersinking a hole. And we've always been able to do chamfering toolpaths using a two-dimensional contour, but in the more recent release of Makeara Cam, we now have a specialized toolpath option for both 2D and 3D files that makes creating these chamfer finishing passes easy to do with any part file you want to work with. When you work with a three-dimensional file like this, it's important that you're doing so with a step file, as a step file will allow us to select the individual faces and features within our design, which is crucial for creating this type of toolpath. If you want to learn more about creating a two-dimensional chamfer based upon a 2D design, check out our other tutorials and guides. Now, when you create a chamfered edge, you typically do so after the edge has already been cut. So as you can see here, I've already cut the outer edge of this part using a contour toolpath that I made earlier, and you can learn more about creating 3D contour toolpaths in another one of our videos. This isn't always required, so depending on the type of chamfering bit you're using, you can create a chamfered edge on an edge that has not yet been cut, so it depends on the specific project that you're creating, and of course, check out our other tutorials and project guides to see these different scenarios. Now I'm gonna hide the 3D contour toolpath that I've already created, just so we're looking at our part. And notice that the 3D model that I'm working with here doesn't actually have a chamfered edge in the CAD design file, and that's perfectly okay. It's perfectly fine to be working with a design file. In fact, it's usually ideal to be working with a design file that does not already have a chamfered edge and instead the chamfer will be created entirely using the CAM processes as we create a chamfered toolpath. So let's create a new 3D chamfer toolpath. And the first thing we have to do is create a contour to follow as when we're working with our step file, we can't really select an edge. We can select an individual face, we can select the entire part, but if I want to chamfer, say, this outer edge here along the top surface of my part, I need to be able to select just that line. Now, we can generate a contour easily, and if you were gonna generate a contour around the bottom of your part, to let's say cut out the perimeter as I did earlier, you can generate a contour around the object, which would do this, and you can see that a, an outline followed the bottom base of our part. But for a chamfered edge around the top of your part, say this outer perimeter, or this inner pocket, or these holes, I actually wanted to use the face selection mode. So I'm gonna choose a face selection mode and click on the top face of my part, then generate the contour. And you'll see that contours were drawn for this inner hole, this inner pocket, the pockets of my numbers, my holes, etc. And I can choose to select all or just one of these contours depending on what I'd like to chamfer. So for example, I just wanna chamfer this outer edge in this part example. After selecting the contour, we can then move into setting our cutting parameters. And the start depth is automatically predetermined but the chamfer depth will set essentially the height of your chamfer. And we usually set that to be something small, like one millimeter, when using the default chamfering bit that's provided in the examples tool pack. Now what the tip depth offset does is it offsets the tip of the chamfering bit based upon the contour that's been selected. So if I keep this tip depth offset to be set to zero, the tip of my chamfering bit will follow directly on this line. If I set it to be something on the negative, I'll be chamfering on the inside of the line, and something on the positive, I'll be chamfering on the outside of the line, depending on the path strategy that you choose. In this case scenario, where I've already cut this outer edge using a contour toolpath, I'm going to offset this to be 0.5 in the positive direction, which will move my chamfering bit half a millimeter to the outside of this contour, allowing me to get a nice chamfered edge right around the perimeter of this part. We can then set the safe positions and the clearance heights, which the defaults are usually fine unless you want to work around any particular tools or clamps that you might have on the bed. And then you can select your tool. And when creating a chamfering toolpath, it's of course important to select a chamfering bit, such as the 0.1 millimeter 90 degree chamfering bit that comes in our examples tool pack for both the Carvera and Carvera Air. You'll see that the cutting parameters are already set to be aluminum based upon the aluminum choice of my stock for this design and the feeds and speeds will then change based upon the aluminum stock. If you wanna adjust the step downs or the feeds and speed rates off the default, you can of course do so and check out our speeds and feeds guides on the wiki page and our YouTube channel to learn more about those parameters. 
And you also might want to change the tool number to correspond to where this tool is located within the Carvera's automatic tool changer, or just to make sure that it's not assigned to be the same number as a tool that you're already using with the Carvera or Carvera Air. Next, we have our path strategy. And running as an inside will chamfer along the inside of the contour. And in this case scenario with the contour line that I've selected, that would be incorrect because I actually want to chamfer along the outside of this part to give me an outer chamfered edge. But if I was instead chamfering this inner hole or chamfering this inner pocket or any of these holes or numbers, then the inside strategy would be ideal. You can choose to change your cutting direction, whether it be conventional or climb milling, and then you can calculate this chamfer. And you'll see that we have our chamfered edge that follows along this perimeter cut. And that of course would fit within the contoured edge that's already been created for this part file. So with 3D chamfer, it's very easy to create a chamfering toolpath using a chamfering bit around a 3D step file like this. But you can of course also create a chamfering path around two dimensional files and even using a contour pass as we've shown in some of our other tutorials and guides. Thanks for watching. And of course, stay tuned for more tutorials and guides on our YouTube channel and wiki site.